Morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining this morning. This is Vinny and Bo show. Some of you might know me, Vinny Chopra and my partner, Bo Xteen. And we come to you live at uh, 9.30 Pacific, which is 12.30 Eastern every Friday. Thanks for joining. And I think, Vinny, honestly, we at some point, we'll, we're going to start a affordable housing multifamily division underneath Monial Investments. I'll run the division. Yeah. We'll have a nonprofit com- component and we'll help. Wow. We could probably help this in a big way, really. I would right? love that. I would love that. Yeah. It's been an exciting week. I hope it's been for you also. Bo, you have some questions, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> How are you, brother? Good. Good to see you, Vinny. Good to see you, Bo. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We are so privileged to have you. Hey, Vinny, real quick. Yeah, okay. bud. All right, I'll bet you sushi that you don't know that. What does SAS stand for? Hi there, everybody joining us, watching us. We are live in five, seven channels actually today in the YouTube, in LinkedIn, in Facebook groups and Facebook. Thanks again for liking the show. Please give comments, share. And we are here for a very big show today. All right, all right, all right. We are back. After a little bit technical difficulty, we are always finding a way. That's what it's all about, you know. Hey, Bo, how are you, brother? I'm doing well, Vinny, yourself? I'm doing great, doing great. I know there's a little lag time. This restream is giving us little challenges. I know we were talking about it, and we are going live from outside the studio. But I hope a lot of people will be, still be able to watch us. Again, this is Vinny and Bo show. We come live to you from San Francisco. I live near San Francisco and brother Bo lives right there in Las Vegas. And we're going to be together here soon. Looks like, right? Yeah, we'll be. There. Yeah, yeah, you'll be here shortly, right? For seven or eight days. So that'll be good. Yes, 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 yes. October 4th, I fly in and then 11th, you know, there is some lead time. I don't know why. But that's okay. You know, we're going to have a great show today. We don't have a guest, but we're going to talk about economy. We're going to talk about real estate. And that's what we talk about. Our whole show is on, you know, the uh, commercial side, mostly residential and commercial real estate, investing, syndicating, loans. I mean, Bo is doing so, so great with so many different loans. He's closing. I see these postings. I'm sure you're seeing his channel YouTube channel, Bo Extens, you know, channel and my channel, Vinny Chopra. Bo, so I'm so proud of you, brother. Things are happening. Thank you. You know, just being, staying disciplined, right? Staying disciplined, even in turbulence times. A lot of people are looking at the news and it's kind of, it's not kind of, it's been negative lately and the, the Fed keeps raising rates, which is, um, you know, it's going to basically when they keep raising rates, it's going to cause unemployment. And that's actually what they want because they want the market to cool down and inflation yeah. to go back to normal. So that's what's happening right now. So the- true. So true. And, you know, 0.75 basis is going to increase again. I know stock market is kind of plunging and a lot of things are happening. What's the market? I know the whole week has been down right now. It's 713 points down, brother. Oh, my gosh. I bought some stocks this morning. I thought that was the low. I said it might go back up, but then 266 Nasdaq down. And oh my gosh, wow, wow. But you know, the thing is this inflation. I mean, uh, uh, we are not economists, guys. You know, we are not CPAs or attorneys. But what we are seeing is the, uh, you know, our government, federal, is trying to, you know, increase the interest rates to uh, strength, uh, see that 0.2% GDP growth only this year, I heard. But the thing is, they want to really bring inflation in check. And I know the gas prices have gone down and other things are like that. But, you know, let's see what happens. I mean, the stock market is just taking a big tumble. We are right at 29,369 this morning. But, you know, the big thing is, from all the different people I got interviewed three, four times this week, the key thing is that people who will stay in the market will find deals. There'll be more deals coming in multifamily, in hotels. There was a big convention in Arizona. 
you know, about the hotels and, uh, you know, hospitality side. Then there was a very big convention in Los Angeles. I couldn't go there. And that was other one, you know, in multifamily the, and lenders and everything. The key thing is, you know, interest rates will jump up, right? Bo? But then we were used to them. Hold on. I mean, this is coming back to me, 2009, 10, 11, 12. We've, I was buying at 6.5% interest rate. And of course, the prices of the properties were lower than what it is now. <laughs> That's the only change. But then it's going to shift the seller's sentiments and expectations downward. It has to happen. And it will happen. Those people who are going to stay in the market for 6, 9, 12 or 13 or 16 or two years, you know, they will reap the benefits. What's your thinking on that? You're exactly correct. I mean, when there's fear in the streets, that's the best time to be in the game. So you don't want to get out of the game right now, but you want to be very selective on what you're buying uh, yeah. using creative financing. And, and with all the negative press, that's good because you're right. The sellers are going to be understand that like they're now expecting a volatile market. They're expecting to reduce prices. So that's going to create uh, another opportunity over the next 12 or 24 months. So I'm excited. I think people are going to fear, uh, people are, are going to get hit hardest that are doing short-term plays like fix and flip deals, right? Like, yeah, I have, I have some clients I talk to and they're taking like $150,000 losses on flips. Wow. And they, in the last eight, eight years, they've done nothing but hit singles, doubles, triples, home runs. And now they've got three or four deals. They're going to lose a hundred grand a pop. Yeah. Luckily for them, they can weather the storm, but it's all about weathering the storm and not being just in one asset class and not be, be if you're doing a lot of value add deals, whether it's single family or multifamily right now, it's probably a little stressful for you versus so if, true. If so if true. Both. Cash and also, in, you know, people yeah. who might be a little bit kind of antsy and everything in this downturn are the bridge loan people. You know, if their bridge is coming due and they're not able to get refinanced and things like that, that's where I would highly recommend everybody to really get into a fixed loan. Actually, it's gone up, brother, in just one month. You know that it's gone from 4.65 to almost 5.25, 5.35 in just one month. And it's going to expect to even LIBOR. I was looking at the whole chart. I mean, it's going to increase in November, uh, October, November, December. I mean, this baby is going higher and higher. Maybe in next February, LIBOR, they thought it might start going down. But the thing is, can you survive if you have an adjustable loan, which is based on certain points with LIBOR and so forth like that, right? What's your thinking on that? One should get into fixed loan now or what? Or wait? Um. Well, I, I think that you need your to to be able to. If you're in if you're in a multifamily bridge loan and you're underwriting with, you know, expectations of rent growth and expectations of four percent money on the refi, yeah, you are kind of screwed uh, unless you have a lot of staying power. I've bought extremely, bought a really good deal. So I think you're going to see stress with bridge debt for sure. And I, I know you're going to see stress within the fix and flip market. You're going to have to change your plan. You might turn yeah. that into a rental property. Um, but, you know, a lot of people I deal with, they, they have funds. So they can, t they can weather the storm and keep it as a rental. And yeah. they can potentially do some cost segregation to offset their tax consequences. And then it balances out their loss on the deal. And if they can yeah. ride it out, three, four, five years from now, they'll be able to exit and make money. So I just look at it as like, it's good to be in a position to have a lot of available capital, a lot of OPM ready, because that's what the opportunities are going to present themselves. If you, The more um, problems you can solve, the more you can help people. And and that's what it's all about. So I'm, I'm looking at it as a good time to really define my buy box of what I want to buy and stick with it, right? And not buy a deal because I'm emotionally attached to that deal. I think that's always the key. And, you know, when times of uncertainty, it's just good to pay attention to what's going on. And that's, I think, what you have to do. You have to, you have to talk to other people in the business. You have to see what's going on there. I mean, there's certain markets right now that aren't seeing any 
uh, depression and they're still appreciating. Then there's mm -hmm. other markets like Las Vegas that are seeing price declines, Arizona, places like that. Uh, I just looked at a, a map of certain states that are, are high risk states and, and, and those are like Las Vegas and, um, you know, the I buyers, Vinny, those I buyers that were buying the single family houses, like, uh, open, what was it? Open door. Um, they have like something like 2000 homes in Arizona. And th so they're going to, they're, get, they're taking a huge haircut. So I think companies like that might actually go out of business, um, potentially some of those I buyers. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what, what's going to happen. But like the iBuyers bought a lot in Arizona and Las Vegas. So um, those are the markets getting hit the worst. So it's interesting to see how that plays out. And they have a lot of venture capital funds and, and so forth. You but, know, you're uh, so right, Bo. I mean, we need to be cautious, but open-minded to really get investors' money, equity. I mean, the powerfulness in any kind of downturn is, do you have the buying power? You know, instantly, because if the deals are coming, you know, downward pressure is there with the cap rate is getting higher in multifamily in my state. And then, you know, hotels, I just got, you know, Wyndham Garden, we just bought. Now we are buying residence in. I just got this week a holiday in. What? And it's converted from Hampton in. Already PIP is in, everything is in. It's beautiful, beautiful property. And it's, uh, I think, generating close to 4 million revenue, you know, and 132 doors or something. But uh, keys, keys. But that's what is really exciting that with the COVID happening, a lot of this hospitality sector, which is commercial sector, I mean commercial, that's all it is, right? So I'm really you know, looking at opportunities where I could dig in into some good areas where I can pick up these hotels at nine cap, eight cap, which is multifamily I bought in Houston at 3.5 cap or something, right? You know, so multifamily, we may have to wait a little bit, but at the same token too, one should be willing to wait and marry the numbers. I always have said that in 15 years, Marry the numbers, not the asset. Don't get hung up. Don't get emotional. I want this or this and this because it looks good. It's everything. The numbers have to make sense. You know, the cash flow numbers or the, uh, you know, three-year numbers uh, where, you know, like in developments for my senior assisted living. I'm stopping a little bit because, you know, the key thing is you've got to make sure the permits are in your hand. I learned so such a big lesson, you know, to really have permits, 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 all the things. We got permits approved. People died in certain cities, you know, in the account, in this uh, permitting uh, departments, building departments. And we are having trouble now because we have to give again all the crap again <laughs> to get it approved, you know. Anyway, and then the loans. So anyway, the thing is, You've got to slow down to speed up. I say that many, many, many times. And I'm sure Warren Buffett believes in that too. You know, and all the big, you know, entrepreneurs, because when there is blood in the streets, you know, I, I shouldn't say that word, but, you know, when it's a downturn, opportunities come. And you need to be vigilant. You need to be ready to, you know, get into and make those broker relationships because who is going to bring that off-market deal to you? I just got an off-market deal this morning off at a hotel. I mean, you know, I just talked to the broker this week, later part of the early part of this week, you know, in Florida. And I got this really great hotel. And this will be our fourth one if I like this one. And I'm just going on a shopping spree to see if the numbers make sense. You know, you got to look at the cap rates, not the multiples of revenues. Anyway, I'm, I'm just kidding. You know, we've been doing hotels for three years now, for three, four years and done some good success. So I'm feeling that, you know, uh, maybe multifamily hotels, of course, Bitcoin mining, you know that. My gosh, the Bitcoin is down to 18,000, but we are mining at 10,000. Again, I'm not selling any securities to anybody, but, you know, we can make profit as long as the Bitcoin price doesn't go down to $10,000, because that's what it's costing us to 
you know, mine one one Bitcoin. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. So so really, if I hear you correctly, is is you got to be able to to just find the opportunities, and and you know, and that might be in different asset classes. Um, so you, you should always be studying different uh, asset classes. Like um, sometimes you can make a whirlwind of cash in the multifamily business, right? Because yes, like uh, you know, like where you're doubling property value and, and forcing appreciation, um, and a lot of it's just momentum plays. It's really like investor confidence, and so if you can catch those little um, those waves, you make so much more money. Um, kind of going into emerging markets, it's a little bit uh, maybe. Uh, scarier because you have to understand that other market, um, whether it's a location or it's a different asset class. But if you can understand that and get the right team members, because it really comes down to having the right team members, because you might not understand the complexities of everything of this certain asset class or this location. But if yeah. you have the right team behind you and you know how to ask the right questions, you you should be fine and you can work out any problems that come up. But, so um, true, brother. So true. I mean, what you're saying is having a strategic team members, like one of my very good members is flying or driving or flying to, you know, this weekend to see this holiday in, in Florida. You know, I mean, what is the possibility of me staying here in San Francisco, not rushing there? I just got back from the trip in Texas and Virginia. I wanted to kind of talk about that too a little bit. You know, so it's good to have great team members who can, you know, go because our LOI cannot be accepted, even presented for this hotel until one of the principals, you know, partner is able to tour the property, right? Seller always wants to know, has the principals already toured it or not? So those things are very, very important. You're right. The other part is, you know, I do want to say to everybody listening to us, you know, it's your choice. If you want to really say, hey, everything is doom and gloom and all that and everything is going to be wiped out of the earth, maybe that's what your attitude is. But at the same token, I would like to really ask everybody to be vigilant and stay the course, stay the course, what you have been trying to do. And there will be amazing opportunities coming your way. Only if you're looking for them you know, and building relationships with the brokers because mom and pop, of course, they'll be trying to sell themselves, you know, uh, on their own and all that. But when it gets tough, when the life gets tough, when you are into bankruptcy or when you are looking into, you know, you can't get this refinancing or the fixed and you're just saying, you know, this is the right time to sell and things like that, they will reach the professionals. So, you know, in the market that you want to purchase, double up, double up over there and talk to the brokers. The more you, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. That's how I believe in. I had four broker calls this week. I'm building relationships in multifamily, in the places I want to buy and the hotels and so on. So in multifamily, maybe the play right now is to assume debt, right? So to yeah, go out, exactly. if you're going to find a deal, maybe it's they've got three percent money or three and a quarter, and you can assume that loan, and then the deal pencils out. Because if if you're underwriting at today's rate, most of these deals aren't going to pencil out unless they need substantial value add or the seller is extremely motivated. So maybe assuming debt and then raising a little bit more equity in the deal uh, is the way to go in multifamily. I totally agree with you, bro. I mean, you know, assuming the debt or even seller financing guys. I mean, look at that. It's a tremendous opportunity. You got to look at everything in a whole picture. There'll be a lot of people who have already paid off, you know, uh, on their uh, uh, mortgages and everything is free and clear. So why not to ask the seller to carry and at maybe five and a half percent or 5% or whatever. And if they are willing to, before they lose more price of their property, they might be willing to sell it to you. And the exciting part is you could even do, do a balloon payment. That's, there are a lot of great creative ways you could do seller financing. You don't have to pay them every month. If you say that, you know, in about two years, I'll make the first payment or, you know, there are so many different ways. I mean, I don't, this is not the platform to do it, 
but there are so many different ways you could buy the property for master plans or uh, options to buy and giving them even more money and you don't give them a, you know your principal pay down hold on not interest but principal pay down every payment you're going to principal pay down and that way when you start paying the interest in few years it will be way down the amount because you paid the principal first very different psychological shift all the banks they charge you interest first and you pay down the principal later so that's what it's all about you got to be creative you got to be thinking and learning these situations how you could pay the principal first so that when you start paying the interest bo it's a much lower amount brother <laughs> yeah i mean that's creative financing i was yeah. always taught you can pay their price as long as they take your terms Yes. And sometimes you, you can even overpay for properties as long as they're overpay for price, brother. That's exactly what I was going to say. A lot of us say, "Oh, I want to save a little bit money over here. Cut down the price." Hold on. If you're paying principal first, who cares? Because you'll be saving so much money in the interest, guys. <laughs> Again, we are not, you know, giving you advice. These are techniques that we use, you know, and that's what we are talking about, right, Bo? Yeah, I I uh, just took a class on this guy, and all he does is master lease properties. He doesn't even he says why own when you can control. So everybody's got a different take on what you can do. So I I learned from a lot of different people, and then yes. when an opportunity might come about, it's like okay, well I can try this, I can try this, I can do seller finance, um, or I can bring in other people's money, OPM, yep, or maybe yep. I can I can master lease the property. So I think knowing all these tools and just like. So I'm always keeping my foot in the water. Like if you take your foot out of the water, you're not going to get these opportunities. And so what I think is that right now is the time to be a creative because you're going to solve seller problems who might be over leveraged and you can step in and do some kind of creative financing deal. Or maybe it's free and clear and they don't want to get crushed on taxes today. So you can do an installment sale. So just depending. I mean, I think there's just lots of solutions. It's just, are you willing to negotiate and talk to people and, and then source, go through a ton of deals to buy one, right? Because that's what it comes down to. You got to look at 50 hotels to find one that you're interested in. So it's just a matter of figuring out your buy box and then and then staying the course. And then at some point, if, the, if it's hard to find the deal in that buy box, that's maybe when you start looking at different types of assets um, to own. Because most investors own different asset classes that are successful. They don't just own one. They might own self-storage. They might own some multifamily. They might own some hospitality mm -hmm. or they might, or they invest as an LP in certain deals and they operate certain deals. So. No, so right. So right. You know, Bo, what you're saying again, you know, what we are trying to say is that, you know, make sure OPM is the best way. That's what my success has come through syndication, through joint ventures, all that, because, OPM, other people's money, there are people who are really, really worried about stock market and their portfolio is done by 33 to 40 percent. And, you know, to share with them the opportunity where there is a tangible asset in real estate could be anything, single family, this, this, Airbnb, multifamily, hotels, you name it, right? There are so many opportunities, uh, mobile home parks, storage units. There are so many different avenues. And the good part is one of the things that really stays and doesn't go up and down like a ro roller coaster is real estate. I mean, it takes time for it to go up. It takes time to go down. And that's what is the key, you know, why we do this show. Vinny and Bo Show, by the way, everybody listening to us, we come live to you Fridays, 9.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m. every Friday. And, uh, you know, unless we are traveling and busy vacation and things like that. But join us, like us, comment with, you know, also down below. Also tell us if you'd like to be a guest with us, you know, if you're a specialist in any particular, you know, and you can add value to our audience in real estate, in loans and other things. And life as general, we talk about attitude control. We talk about lots of things and positivity, the book I wrote, and I'll be in October over there in Orlando 
speaking, I think 21st of uh, October, I'll be the keynote speaker talking about positivity and syndication there with about thousand people. So I would love to meet a lot of, lot of uh, people. Also, I'll be in the Tampa area, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, almost five days over there featuring our senior assisted livings and uh, all these different ground up constructions. Bo, I, I, anything you want to promote and talk about, brother? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Um, we're we're going to be uh, we're doing an event. I'm doing an event with uh, five other co-hosts, and it's going to be in Fresno, California, November 12th. We're going to have between five to six hundred people, probably uh, maybe more, depending on the venue size. It's going to be a huge event. We've got some big name people that are going to be uh, presenting and, and a lot of the, the gentlemen that are co-hosting with me, they all have huge following. So uh, we're in the planning stages right now. We're just um, locking down the venue, but it'll be November 12th in Fresno. Oh, November 12th. Yeah. It's going to be a huge event. Um, so I, I, oh, I'm happy, wow. happy to I'm be a part of that. Far. Maybe we could see, yeah, I don't know if you're going to fly straight there or you're coming here and then we could go. I don't know. We'll see who the speakers and the audience is. If you want me involved or anything, huh? You know. Sounds yeah. good. The other thing I was gonna say, which is which is kind of funny, I'm gonna tell a little story real quick. So my aunt was over at my house last week, and she was telling me she she just moved here. She was looking for a bank, and she yeah. was going back and forth. She said, "Well, I like the customer service, but they they don't pay like." She was looking at the rates they pay, and they're and it was like one and one point two five percent, and I'm like. Tell my aunt, why the heck do you leave money in your bank? Why would yeah. you leave money? Like she probably leaves like a good portion of her savings in, in her bank accounts. Yeah. And I was like, I got pissed off because I'm like, do you know with inflation, you're losing money every single day? So, she's so true. She's so worried. You know, she's so worried she's going to like lose money. I'm like, you can be ultra conservative and get a much better return than 1%. And you're yeah. you're like shopping between banks for this quarter percent when you should be making six, seven, eight, nine percent on your money. It's just I it's just a it's mind boggling that people don't want to improve their financial knowledge. And and you know, you're talking to a lady that's worked in the same company for 40 years. It's like Look at why that. would you you could have if you would have just compounded your money in something else, you would probably have three or four times what you have in savings right now without taking much risk at all. If any, right? You could, so I mean, it, it blows my mind. And I gave my aunt crap for that. I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, you know, lend, a, be a private lender, lend a very low loan to value on these private mortgage deals. You're going to get a, you know, I invest, I, I put a little bit of money in this. Uh, I can invest in individual mortgages, right? For yep. like people that are yep. flipping houses. Mm -hmm. It's like a mutual, it's like a mutual fund. I can, and, so I spread out, I, I got started last month and I put 20, 20, 20,000 into it and I invested yep. in 15 different loans. It's the coolest platform. And I, and I'm, you can, you know, your returns are anywhere from eight and a half to 15, 15 are the more risky deals. Look at that. Look at that. And, and so like, I'm not putting my life savings in it, but like you should diversify and put 20, 30, 50, a hundred thousand in something like that. You should put a hundred or 200 or 300 or 500 in, in a syndication. You should own some rental property. You should like, you should have these different baskets of wealth, right? And like, so although I only put diversification, brother, diversification. Yeah. yeah. Even if start small, like test the waters, put your feet in, put yeah, 15, 20 exactly. grand in something. Like if you, if you're leaving your money in your bank, you're, you're, you're foolish. You should, you got to learn the basic principles of money. Like your money is going to, is losing money by putting, leaving it in a bank account. Like, and, so and it gives, true. it gives people peace of mind, but, like they need, you need to educate them and say, well, what happens when, you know, like what happens if you didn't have a big nest egg? Like you worked your whole life for this nest egg and you could have like four or five times the size of this nest egg by just doing simple principles. And it just, it crushes me. And then I talk to these real estate investors. They know nothing about cost segregation. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You guys need to be going to events and learning from people. Like, and I always bring up my friend Vinny. Vinny knows. Most, like he puts himself in places like he understands cost segregation. He can make a lot of money, but also have a lot of accelerated depreciation with offsets today's taxable dollar. 
And people I just... love what you just said. I was going to say that cost segregation, bonus depreciation, hundred percent in twenty twenty two, brother, and then eighty percent next year and sixty and all that, and also retirement funds self directing. Oh my gosh, I meet with so many very very big entrepreneurs, and they don't even know that they could take their retirement fund from Wall Street, put it into self directed vehicle. They said, Vinny, are you telling me the truth? I said, yeah, brother, <laughs> I've been doing it for 15 years. So it's amazing how many people don't know how to take their money from Wall Street and take care of investing into real estate and other you know, places, uh, all diversifications to self-directing it, you know, and the cost segregation, like you said, and hotels. I mean, you know, we are not syndicating, but we are doing manager managed and member managed uh, LLCs where our partners will be able to get active losses. What? So that's huge thing. Anyway, no, this has been such a great, I hope guys, you, everybody who is watching and again, we make a podcast out of this also and uh, bits and pieces so that you can really see the essence of our, you know, giving back to the society. This is Vinny and Bo show and we'll see you next week, Friday, 9.30 a.m., Pacific, 1230 Eastern. So please comment, like, and share this episode with all over, all around. Bo, and uh, hold on, Bo, and I'm going to do the uh, live stream out. Then we'll meet again, brother. One sec. So happy to be on your show, finally. I'm a long time fan, and I watch all your guys' content. Awesome. We're very, very, very invested in our community. It's wonderful to be here. This is Vinny Chopra and also my good buddy, Bo Exchange. And we are so happy. It's amazing what's going to happen. So, you know, we're amped up to do the show and we got a lot of hype about the guest today, so I'm excited to Oh, share. I know. So excited to come live to you all. Thank you.